Okay guys, it's me again, and uh, today I want to give a final review of Tokyo Xanadu for the PS Vita. And there's a version, an extended version coming out for a PS4, I believe next month. But here's a review of Tokyo Xanadu. I just finished it this morning, about 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, about 3 or 4.30 this morning. Uh, I put in 50, either 51 or 52 hours. <clears throat> and those 52 hours was not me grinding. I redid maybe 3 or 4 dungeons and that was it. So that was pretty much me, 99.9%, .9 no grinding involved. Just me playing through the game. Okay, so I took some notes. Uh, this is what you get when you get a bunch of high school kids. One's a delinquent. One's a pop star. One's a hacker. One's just a goofball. Uh, one's has like 15 part-time jobs. And... Mix those kids up with a bunch of uh, Japanese Mafia guys, a street gang, uh, a corporate tycoon, and mix all that with some monsters, and you get Tokyo Xanadu. Uh, let me start off. The, con uh, the pros are... Okay, uh, the pros... Some of the music is really good. Uh, it's pretty catchy. Uh, the dungeons get better as you go along through the story. Uh, I've showed some dungeons off in the videos I posted a couple of days ago. Uh, the first couple of dungeons are kind of bland, but after that, they get better and better. Uh, and the last one is really, really nice. Uh, the monster designs are really cool. I like that. Uh, the combos, once you unlock the combos, they're pretty flashy. They look really nice. Uh, the story is good, but I stopped at the true ending. Uh, which, like I said, that didn't involve me trying to get a true ending. It's just me playing the game, and I got the true ending. You can do more and get a better ending, but I'm not doing that. That's another probably five hours or so maybe maybe not that long but it's more stuff you got to do and i'm not putting any more time into tokyo xanadu and i say that not because it's bad but uh let's see how do i put this uh okay <clears throat> This was a long game, Lost Dimensions, also for the PS Vita. But it wasn't 50 hours long, you know? And I believe it had a, a New Game Plus as well. So it was not 50 hours long. Mine Zero was a fairly long game. But once again, it wasn't 50 hours long. The first run through of Borderlands 2 was nowhere near 50 hours long. Okay. Odin Sphere Lead the Right, sir. Was a long game. And my only complaint with that is they could have edited it at least five hours out of this game. Because by the last chapter or so, no matter if the story was good, because it was, I was getting tired of it, man, you know? And... I hate to say that because the game was good, the story was good, but it dragged and dragged and dragged just to get to a point, you know? And that's the major flaw with Tokyo Xanadu. Uh, the characters are kind of, if you watch a bunch of anime or play a bunch of anime type games on the Vita, you've seen these characters before. And one of the characters 
He's not on the cover of Tokyo Xanadu, but he's on the one of the characters, one of the uh, the goofball characters in Tokyo Xanadu, reminds me of this dude right here from Mind Zero, and if you played Mind Zero, he's a guy with the demon hand. Uh, so the character archetypes are there, and to a certain degree. The lead character from Tokyo Xanadu reminds me also of the lead character from Mind Zero. And incidentally, both their names begin with a K. Go figure. But Tokyo Xanadu, uh, it goes on for way too long. And that's because, I don't know, it's just... It's like the developers or the writers, they kept beating you over the head with the fact that these characters have changed throughout their three-month ordeal. But yet, you don't see any of that, you know? And they keep beating you over the head about how friendship is magic and you can defeat everything through friendship and blah, blah, blah. Once again, they, they just keep hammering that down. <clears throat> Sorry. They keep hammering that over your head. And it's like, okay, we get the point, you know? Go on. Uh, I would have been happy if they would have finished everything at 40 hours. 40 hours to me is a good stopping point for any game. You know? Uh, especially RPG. Uh, so I have Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2. And I'm... Hesitant to play those because I heard those are way long, you know, 60 to 80 hours. And if I got tired of this at 40 hours, I can imagine how tired I'll be, how bored I'll be through Trails of Cold Steel at 60 to 80 hours. But I'll force my way through the game. Uh, the story is good. Uh, characters are good. Uh, let me get back to... Uh, there are some nice puzzle elements in the dungeons as you go along. Uh, but they're all, they're all. In the same sense, there's also some really bad platforming elements. And I say bad because I hate platforming elements. If I want to play a platforming game, I'll play Mario. You know? I do not want platforming elements in action games. You know? They, I, I, I despise that. You know? But besides that, uh, looking at my list here, uh, there's some nice twists that I didn't see coming. Uh, there's some really nice characters in here that one of my favorite characters that you'll meet is a character named the Seal Knight or the White Shroud. Really cool character. And it's a shame that we don't get to play him in the game because he is just awesome, man. If they ever make a sequel, of this game, uh, I would love to be able to play him uh, in the game in part two if they make one. Uh, as far as the cons, uh, the characters are just your typical anime characters. Uh, they keep beating you over the head with the whole friendship thing, which once you say it one time, okay, I get it. I don't need you to go over and over and over again, you know. Uh, no one is ever really in danger in this game, even though the overall story is these monsters are coming into our dimension, you know, and they're doing damage to uh, a fictional city in Japan, uh, which if we fail, they'll take over all of Japan and ultimately the world. But no character is ever in any immediate danger, which kind of makes the story lacking, you know? There's no point where I think of, oh my god, you know, X character is in trouble, so, you know, there's no sense of urgency in the game, in the story, you know. Uh, like I said, the best characters are unlocked at the end of the game. The last two characters you unlock are the best ones in the game, to me, rather. Maybe not so much as power-wise or whatever, but I like their character, the way they look, you know, everything. Uh... A small con is the language issue. Uh, 
It's subtitled in English. It's totally all in Japan, uh, sorry, Japanese, which it's not that bad if I'm reading a subtitled movie, but for a game, I like it to be English because I'm trying to focus on what's happening on screen plus read it, and it gets a little confusing sometimes trying to focus on two things at once, you know. Uh, that's pretty much about it. Uh, I recommend playing the game. It's a really good game. Uh, Tokyo Xanadu. I focus mainly on the first true ending because I like the ending best. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I read up on the true true ending, and I'm like, nah, nah, I'll stick with the ending I got because it ends. To me, it ends like. I want stories to end, but I don't always need a happy ending, you know, and I don't always need a downbeat ending, but I don't need endings where at the end of the day, it's all rainbows and unicorns, you know, because that's not true life, real life. And I know this is, you know, the video game anime, but at the same time, you know, I like more realistic endings, you know, but uh, good game, solid game. It goes on for... 10 hours too long in my book, but it's a solid game. I would give it a 8 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10 at least. Uh, I recommend it if you like action RPGs, Tokyo Xanadu. Okay, guys, take care.